things that reference librarians do when someone's standing there and the phone starts to ring and you're saying are they going to answer that and the customer's saying either help me or go answer the phone you take that out of the equation the customers are getting better service and the efficiency that you have in your branch means there's less people on the floor to actually provide uninterrupted service for the customers um, I think technical services is always um, one of the departments that has opportunities. Uh, we had a fundamental, organic, systematic backlog of materials that was about six weeks in duration. And the staff always did a great job of getting the best sellers out for customers as quickly as possible. And yet, in these budgetary times, why would you allow six weeks of product to sit on your loading dock? And so we gave the staff the challenge, which said, um, it's got to be a 24-hour turnaround. And I heard initially all the reasons of why that wouldn't work, and Pat, you've only been in smaller libraries, and yada, yada. Um, one of my quotes is about um, our greatest asset isn't um, our people, it's the right people. You have to have the right people actually looking at those challenges and to say what really is possible. Uh, we flowcharted everything in tech services. Uh, it was a flowchart half the size of uh, this, this screen. And uh, you really ask the question at every step, is this adding value to the process? Is this really necessary? Is it redundant? And at the end of the process, about a year, they moved to 24 hours. They are consistently um, with a 24-hour turnaround from box to branch and out. And that's about 400,000 items a year. The best part, though, is not just the reduction in the time. Uh, we've moved about half of the public service, of the tech services staff, to the public to be able to add real value to the customers um, where they're needed. Those are some traditional services. Let me talk a little bit about how we try to bring some innovation in social networking. Many of you have uh, Facebook pages for your libraries and friends of your libraries through the Facebook pages. Recently, we've started purchasing advertising um, through Facebook. So about six weeks ago, we had 5,000 friends of the Columbus Metropolitan Library on Facebook. And we purchased ads that went to all of the friends of our friends who were not our friends. Okay? So when they log on, over on the right-hand side, they see a banner that says, become a friend of the Columbus Metropolitan Library. We also extended that to a 50-mile radius around Columbus. And six weeks later, we have 10,000 friends. We've grown it uh, by 100%. Uh, it's 40 cents each time someone clicks through. If they don't click through, there's no charge, and it's maxed out at $50 a week. And we think that's, that's um, you know, a pretty uh, reasonable way to try to connect um, in this new environment. Um, I think the last thing that I would probably talk about is how do we move then with, these, with our resources that have been freed up from the analog work? And what do we do with those resources? And for Columbus, uh, one of our new initiatives is around something that we call Ready to Read. State of Ohio is one of the only states in the nation that tests for kindergarten readiness for literacy. And uh, 130,000 children enter kindergarten each year and 40,000 flunk that exam. In the city of Columbus, we have schools that are a failure rate of 70%. Now imagine being labeled in kindergarten as a failure, right, upon arrival. And these are very simple things. This is letter awareness, uh, rhyming, um, print recognition, and yet so many kids do so poorly. And we have recognized through some of our work, some of our partnerships, watching what's being done here in Northeast Ohio as well, at Cuyahoga and others, is that it's, it's not the children, it's the adults. And so the Ready to Read program is really targeted at young parents. And young parents come to the program it's an outreach-based program. It's not in any of our libraries. And we're teaching parents how to be their child's first teacher. And it's pretty profound because we visit churches and uh, 
soup kitchens and social service agencies where sometimes people are waiting three and four hours for a counselor or a server. And you get a chance to connect with people at a very deep level. And uh, what you also see is that these young parents, oftentimes very young parents, when we start to show them what a story time is, and it's a big oversized book, and we're reading, and the rhyming starts, and the cadence, and the smiles uh, come across their face, you realize that uh, they are experiencing a story time for the first time in their life. And how could you ever expect that they would transfer that skill to their own children if they don't know it themselves? So if we hope to move the needle on the kindergarten readiness, we think libraries are uniquely qualified to do that. We're also really excited that businesses are recognizing that we're uniquely qualified to do it. Uh, in Columbus, the headquarters of Nationwide Insurance, in March, they gave us a grant of $500,000 to expand that program for one year to take it to additional neighborhoods within Columbus. And um, this, I believe, is a transformation of libraries to move from outputs when we talk about circulation and books and how many books move through that is not a part of our story our story is around changed lives and that's where we need to place all of our resources so we're going out on a limb um, talking not only about trying to increase kindergarten readiness for three and four and five year olds uh, but ultimately the long-term goal is increased high school graduation rates Eight, uh, 12 years down the road as well. So that's just an example of, I think, how we can move from the analog age to the digital age and use our resources a bit more effectively. Um, but I certainly would never uh, leave the podium without stressing it's not just about telling your people you must change. Leaders have to create that vision. They have to make sure that the staff understands it. And also, one of the books that I recommended on the reading list is Managing Transitions. Take a look at it. It really is one of the best books written about how to lead an organization through change. We've done book discussions with a hundred of our managers, and it's really helped them try to sell that change to the organization so ultimately we're more successful in the community. Thank you.